What was it like joining corporate America, coming out of a 10-year career in the United States Air Force? I learned how to become softer. You had that military <laughs> precision about you? Very much yeah. so. Hi everyone, Mike Siebert here. Welcome to Sidekicks Conversations. This is a new series where I sit down with interesting people to connect and listen and learn from each other's lived experiences. And what a better place to do that than right here at Sidekicks, our wildly popular Bellevue headquarters pub, named of course after the iconic T-Mobile Sidekick, one of the coolest smartphones of all time. The Sidekick was actually America's first smartphone launched by T-Mobile way back in 2002. And beyond that, it's a little nod in the name to the cool people we hang out with here at the pub. Today, I'm joined by one of our colleagues who's incredibly impressive. Kendra Lord is the Director of Geospatial Engineering and Analytics at T-Mobile and has been with us since 2018. She's a 10-year veteran of the United States Air Force where she was a senior mission analyst. Now, not to spoil all the details of what we'll chat about, but we're filming this on the heels of a recent uncarrier move around broadband, internet freedom. And Kendra's work is vital for all of the growth of our high-speed internet business. So Kendra, welcome. Thank you. So when did you join this team? You've been at this a while, right? Yeah, I joined in uh, August of 2018. And, so um, where was home internet? It was a twinkle in our eye back then, it, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a whisper for sure. <laughs> I was employee number six. I was the only employee of Geospatial. It was outside of our network team. And uh, yeah, it was... Uh, this thing that uh, you know, we definitely had to swim upstream at that point in time to to, to make more than a twinkle. And that what was, was it like being on a team in its infancy like that? We're this great big giant company. Most of the people watching are either followers of our company or employees of our company. We're you know we have tens of billions of dollars, 110 million customers. We're used to big. Yeah. You were starting out on something in 2018 that was really small. What was that like? I would say it was the right thing for me because arguably I just stepped out of the Air Force less than two weeks before my first day um, at T-Mobile. And I was honestly like, oh, good Lord, can I be the right fit for corporate America? And I think that small team, that startup mentality, that um, in the trenches of sorts team it was why it worked. Uh, and so it was like almost an instant fit for me personally. What was it like joining corporate America, coming out of a 10-year career in the United States Air Force? I did a lot of uh, fake it till you make it kind of thing there, <laughs> if I'm being completely honest, because I, uh, I was terrified internally, but really excited to take on a new challenge and um, have new experiences. Uh, the Air Force, I made a lot of really, really great friends. Um, I loved the people I worked with. The, the work I did was obviously interesting, and I was ready for something new and that transition for me was easy because of the team that I joined I think um, and you know I, I learned how to become softer I hear stories about myself my first couple weeks here and I'm like oh god how did I not get fired you had that military precision about you very much yeah. so <laughs> what is a mission analyst? That's one of the roles you had in the Air Force. Yeah, that was my last title. Um, so when I was a mission analyst, I was a geospatial intelligence analyst for um, Air Force Special Operations Command. And I was stationed in Florida. Not a bad place to be. And what we did as geospatial intel is I worked for a unit that um, did uh, supported UAVs, so unmanned aircraft. Um, we were considered deployed in place. So we were working anywhere in upwards to 22 AORs. You know, you're constantly in a in a war zone of sorts. But um, it was part of ISR, so intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance. Um, but as a geospatial intelligence analyst, it means you're doing fundamentally what we are today, which is you take geospatial data, take human intelligence, and you time together to drive military tactics. Yeah, and you were able to do all that work from Florida. Yes. Okay, so sort of in a in a at a base or in an office like setting. It's called a skiff. I yeah. was excited when I joined T-Mobile because I'm like, I get a real window for the yeah. first time. Like I can see actually outside. <laughs> <laughs> Director of Geospatial Engineering and Analytics. Um, I'm asking for a friend, of course. But what is that? <laughs> it's a mouthful of a of a title, isn't it? Uh, we're the brains of the internet product is the way that we refer to it. Uh, we leverage network data, partnering with our network partners uh, to identify households that we believe will have not only a consistent experience, 
but are going to want a product. So we consider competitive data and information such as that to drive the business forward. So explain that to everybody. So we serve um, 40 million households with home internet, but by serving 40 million households, that doesn't necessarily mean that all 40 million of them could use it simultaneously. Exactly. So how does it work? How do we determine who's in and who's out? If somebody comes to our website and they want to put in their home address, 40 million people if they did it today, um, are there are addresses that would be approved. How do we decide that? Well, we decide that in heavy partnership with our network team um, and capacity planning. So what we do is we manage and we're, we're the enforcers is the best way I can put it, is we join uh, geospatial data and non-geospatial data together to drive analytics. We build the fundamentally the back end that is our yes, no um, of sorts, where it's not only the households that we believe could get it, but how many within a given sector we could say yes to. Well, right now, the net promoter scores on the product are amazing, so you're obviously making great decisions. And if people come in and they put in their address and they get a positive answer and then they sign up, what you're saying is that means that we've looked at the throughput and capacity of the sector that they're on and forecasted out into the future as to whether or not the capacity will still be there in the future. And if it looks like it will be, then we say yes? Yes. That's, I mean, that's the core belief and it's considered monthly, right? Humans are humans, and we can't consider, uh, we can't anticipate how they're going to behave, which is why we have to reconsider it every month, because you know Joe next door could be a, <laughs> you know, bit torrenting, and it's going to impact right. how many people we can actually sell to that next month. So, what if over a couple month period, um, like dozens of people in the same neighborhood wanted to sign up? It ca caught wildfire in the neighborhood. Would we, after a certain period of time, like the number of people that signed up, would the nth person? get a no then, or how would it work? It's first come, first serve, right? And so um, it's near real time where we're updating as the sale occurs, it's taking one away. We call them available slots, Rick likes to call them seats on the plane, and it's instantaneous. But every month we're opening up more because 2.5 build is happening, the network is obviously growing and evolving, and every month we can be growing and driving our leads for marketing because we've collected that information from the website that then enables marketing to reach out and go, hey, I know we said no last month, but now do you still want to join? Because we can take you. I love it. So that's a going the other direction, whereas yeah. somebody applied a couple months back and we're adding capacity, and once we add the capacity, we reach back out to them? Exactly. Yes. I love that. Tell me about joining that team in its infancy, I, you were talking about what it was like in a big company like ours, especially coming out of the military. But what, what, through the three or four year journey we've had in home internet, especially for your team in geospatial, what, what started to click? What, was there a particular time when you knew, okay, this is, this is happening now and it's really working and you, know, you start to see the size of the price? Oh yeah, I think that one was definitely an evolution. The, the first point was when we got the pilot approved, really. And I remember um, when we did our first, it was our soft launch in, what was that, March of 2019, where we, I remember identifying 50 people that we had on an Excel spreadsheet that are like, these are the prime houses that we want to target for this product. 50. 50. We have like well over a million now. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, it was 50 on, a, <laughs> on an Excel spreadsheet that I typed in manually. I'll never forget it. And um, I remember thinking like we had post-it notes on a wall about our, our customer journey and you sit here watching, waiting for it to launch. It was when that worked, frankly, because you're just taking a risk and hoping this is the right journey and everybody is extremely passionate. That team um, was the magic sauce, I really think. Um, all of our personalities were very tenacious. Um, none of us were hesitant to swim upstream and we got used to hearing no a lot, yeah. but we challenged it, which I know you heard plenty about. Yeah. And why do you think there were some no's? What were hesitant? Why were people hesitant? Well, the capacity usage that an internet product has on a mobile network is scary. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the network had not been, a mobile network had not been optimized for fixed devices. And we are a completely different product with very different customers that we're still learning a ton about. An awful lot of people that transition from the military are in technology. Do you think that's a coincidence or do you think that's sort of a natural place given the kind of skill sets and approaches that military careers build? There's a, a nuance to that. I think it's the skills that translate well into corporate America tend to be relatively technical. The, 
best skill and what makes you to be able to be successful in a really stressful, high activity environment in technology is the soft skills that you're given in the military, any branch. Um, Leadership skills, exactly. people skills. Exactly, yeah. your ability to like survive under pressure, <laughs> change frequently. Yeah. And I remember when I first started, people were looking at me like, why aren't you more stressed? You've had like three different bosses. And I'm like, well, you know, military's yeah. not that different. New commander comes in and everything changes every year. Interesting. Have you been able to find common ground with other people that have had military careers here at the company or elsewhere in your professional career since leaving? Yeah, I've um, Van, obviously, our um, Allies Network for Veterans um, has been wonderful. I've met some really special people with far more interesting stories than mine, I would say. Um, and, you know, I've created friendships there. Tell me about your involvement with Van. What kinds of things have you, you know, been able to uh, be involved with, or yeah. people you've met, or? I've um, well, quite a quite a few friends that are kind of around around the, the enterprise. Frankly, a lot of them in the network side, but um, just a lot of the gatherings and the time that you get to spend with other veterans is special. Because um, no offense against civilians, but yeah. it's just never quite the same, and other people can't quite get you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like another veteran can. It's interesting. You've been working with Lead Magenta Next uh, to help that support. And can you tell us about Lead Magenta Next and your work with the group? And yeah, Lead Magenta Next is really impressive because it's focusing on groups of individuals or different groups around D, E, and I, and trying to get people into more managerial positions to help grow our executive ranks. I'm working with an individual because right this this go around Lead Magenta Next, which just completed and um, was focused on Van. Um, so I got to work with a veteran of 32 years and help him um, grow his career and acting as a sponsor. It's about helping them grow their network and getting them in front of the right people around the enterprise. This is all about supporting other people. And you know, it's interesting the journey you've been on. You're a leader, you have a team. Tell me about your team. My team is, I. They're the glue. They are why I'm happy to be here, if yeah, I'm being too. honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of very smart, young talent, and um, we are tackling challenges day in and day out. Um, and those creative brains is what has helped us, uh, I really think, is the driving force to get us to one million. Okay, speed round. If I could put you on the spot, if you could have a conversation with anyone, who would it be and what would it be about? Oh, geez. Um, I'm going to have to go sentimental on you here. It would be my dad, and it would be about just about anything. Yeah. Uh, I assume you lost him. When did, did you lose him? I did, last yeah. year. Last year. Okay, mm -hmm. so relatively recently. Yeah. 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 Well, I get that. Um, I've, uh, my wife, Suzanne, and I have only one living parent of the four parents, and you know that's uh, something that in adulthood, if, if things happen in the right order, you know, we, we all wind Absolutely. up facing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy. No. Yeah. No. Um, but I will tell you is that T-Mobile was amazing throughout all of it, if I'm being frank, because it was in the middle of COVID and things were crazy. And I had, you know, Dow at the time was phenomenal, as was, you know, Rick, my leadership. So, well, T-Mobile is a good place community. to be. Thank you for playing a big role in the community and for building this million person internet business with all of your great work. We could have never gotten this far unless we were so smart about who would have a great experience and you and your team should be so proud of what you're doing. Thank you. Thanks for sharing your story yeah, with us, Yeah, thank Kendra. you for having me. Yeah, cheers. Cheers.